Evening, it's uh, Adil Fazal, a market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets for Monday's trading session, the uh, 2nd of October 2017. Please be sure to visit Trade Signal, Signals and Market Updates from leading providers at www.tradesignal.com. You can download the app at the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Okay, so uh, let's look at the actual uh, markets for uh, or going into Monday uh, in terms of the various side effects. First of all, you have the situation in Spain. Uh, chaos, violent clashes as Catalans go to the polls in vote. That could uh, obviously split Spain. So again, uncertainty in Eurozone certainly is going to rise. You we may well see a, a blip or dip in the Euro, uh, which in turn last week, although last week the dip in the Euro certainly helped European equities this week, from my perspective, it certainly will be risk negative. Okay, so going into this week, we certainly have the German DAX finishing very strong, up almost a percentage point on Friday, very, very impressively. The French CAC up and the FTSE up higher as well. Again, on the back of a weaker euro. If you, if you like, if you look at the euro USD chart, let's quickly bring this up for you. We've certainly bounced up people at 1.1720. Again, it certainly is coming on board at the moment. Let's just quickly look at this chart. As you can see here, we've got a gap down on the back of uh, the uh, news regarding Spain. That's not actually going to be risk uh, positive. Just bear that in mind. Obviously, a weaker euro helps European equities, which obviously has on the back of Yellen, obviously maintaining a hawky stance and also inflation numbers coming in weaker. Uh, last week with regards to the Eurozone and also several policy makers all coming in uh, obviously on the side of uh, the dovish stance as well which in turn obviously has helped European equities shake off the uncertainty regarding the German election given the fact that Merkel didn't actually win the uh, win the uh, win by a, a wide majority and again she has to go into a coalition which obviously weakens her hand and uh, any potential future obviously uh, European negotiations in negotiations with regards to Brexit as well Okay, so a lot of uncertainty is going forward. So the euro, the USD itself, last week certainly fell on the back of obviously Miss Yellen, uh, obviously with a hawkish stance or uh, state remaining steadfast to a hawkish stance, and also Mr. Trump, obviously talking tax cuts, which in turn sent the euro USD lower, as you can see here, from 1.20 down to 1.17. So a 300 pip fall on the euro USD certainly obviously allowed European equities to uh, benefit and gain from that. And obviously shake off the uncertainty regarding the election okay so that was the status quo now we are going into monday's trading with we have had uh, chinese data coming in stronger than expected so chinese data over the weekend certainly coming in stronger the numbers that we're looking at at the moment uh non-manufacturing pmi stronger than expected nbs panel manufacturing pmi and cakes in all coming in stronger than expected although china is off on a holiday but you are looking for a bullish move on euro us on aussie usd and kiwi dollar on the back of that okay in terms of uh, European equities, let's look at the actual picture, given the fact that that's the backdrop. Again, we've shaken off election uncertainty, and the focus certain, certainly has been on a weaker euro, obviously weaker inflation numbers at that as well. We even close the gaps. You can see here we close this gap, close this gap here as well, the key gap at 12.770, and we still managed to push higher up to 12.830. You are looking at resistance on the daily chart now at 12.840. If we break that, the next resistance is seen at 12.950. So... 12.840, 12.950, watch out for those two levels and the German DAX if you are trading that on Monday. Uh, weekly chart, all-time high, as we already know, is currently 12.950 on the weekly. If just going to clarify, 12.950, we break through there. Obviously, the bulls certainly are in, in control. Now, I was expecting a, a bear flag formation to play out on the back of, obviously, Euro USD above 1.20. That certainly has uh, reversed on the back of, obviously, Mr. Trump and US equities certainly pushing higher as well. Okay, so... In terms of the German DAX, just to clarify, the MDAX 50 as well, as you can see here, clear breakout, breakout last week, impressive breakout, and that's obviously helping the German DAX as well. Also, the tech performance, tech all share index as well, with regards to the uh, German uh, economy, again, certainly performing very, very bullishly. And the election uncertainty certainly has not deterred that whatsoever. Okay, in terms of the French CAC now, let's move on to the French CAC. Again, like I said, weaker inflation numbers certainly help. European equities on Friday and also US equities pushing higher as well. The IHS formation certainly completed and what a move from that pivot low from 5,000 up to 5,330. You had a 330 pip point rally on the French CAC even with labour reforms not going through. So again, uh, Mr. Macron's uh, popularity certainly is dwindling. Okay, uh, yet still the uh, French CAC certainly has managed to uh, uh, register impressive gains. Now we are into resistance here at 5,325. Uh, you have resistance at 5,340. So again, this is a zone that I'm more than happy to short on the French CAC. I may well take out another position tonight. Uh, I'm looking to uh, potentially short the French CAC. Now, we do have resistance here 
Well, we had resistance here at 5325. The next resistance is 5340. Uh, so I'm more than happy to short that uh, potential zone. We do have an unfilled gap left behind on the 60 minute chart. So I certainly be, will be looking to target that on the 60 minute time frame. Okay, looking at the 10 minute chart. Impressive, impressive thrust going into the close. Very impressive thrust. So we initially sold off and then the bulls just literally took over. Okay, so an impressive short squeeze going into that close. Okay, so again, looking for weakness from my perspective on the uh, French CAC. Looking at the euro stocks, whilst we're looking at European indices, uh, daily charts certainly does signify a resistance here now. You know, resistance here at 5 or 3,600. Okay, next resistance is 3,615, and then eventually you're looking at gap fill at 3,640. Will we hit that target? I don't know. Okay, uh, but my bias certainly will be bearish based on the uh, euro, European equities. Okay, going into Monday's trading, especially due to the Catalan vote creating uncertainty as well. 60 minute chart, I mean, it's been very, very impressive. As soon as we broke through that 3,550 zone, we hit 3,570, and then obviously we've hit. 3600 now so very very impressive to say the least 10 minute chart as well just literally non-stop i mean that short squeeze towards the, the close on friday very impressive on back of obviously weaker inflation and, and several uh, dovish rhetoric as well okay so looking at the FTSE 100 now uh, FTSE 100 certainly benefiting given the fact that uh, we did have uh, weaker gdp numbers uh, from a weaker growth numbers on friday which in turn sent sterling lower uh, obviously uh, dashed expectations of a rate hike which in turn obviously triggered a short squeeze and obviously with German equity rallying as well and uh, the Russell 2000 breaking higher the Dow pushing higher S&P pushing and breaking higher as well that certainly set the FTSE 100 higher too although it was a late Friday I did actually open up a short position around the 72, 73.75 zone looking to short the FTSE stop loss just above so 7400 looking for a potential move low we are now into key diagonal trend line resistance not only that, we're into that FIB 75% resistance as well. Looking at the 60 minute chart at the moment, you do have resistance up here at 7390. There is resistance here at uh, 7380 as well. Certainly looking for a uh, reversal. 10 minute chart has intraday double top again, 7380 zone. So it's therefore looking for that top. Can we have an unfilled gap left behind at 7325? Uh, previous resistance equals support 7330. So that's a zone. That was certainly looking to be target. Now, we do have uncertainty with regards to Ms. May and uh, her uh, liability, Ms. Mr. Johnson, with his racist rants, okay? Uh, certainly uh, looking to potentially overthrow her as well. So there's a lot of uncertainty with regards to the Tory party uh, conference this week. I think it is in Manchester. So again, let's see how that unfolds and obviously the repercussions there as well. Uh, Brexit, obviously, talks are not going as, uh, as good as uh, everybody expects. Uh, so again, looking for risk aversion on the FTSE 100. On the daily chart, 60 minute chart, and the 10 minute chart, looking to potentially close that gap at 73.20. Okay, so I think that really is a summation, really, of uh, the uh, European equities. Uh, certainly, uh, extremely, extremely uh, uh, overbought. Uh, again, that, that short squeeze on Friday, really, from my perspective, was like a potential exhaustive top pattern. Uh, and then and now I'm looking for a potential reversal back down to gap fill below, specifically on the FTSE, and also looking for weakness in the German DAX as well, given the election uncertainty, even though. We have negated that to a large extent, helped by Yellen and Trump's tax cuts. Okay, so again, triggering a short squeeze in Europe due to the weaker Euro USD. Okay, so let's see how the Euro USD fares this week. Uh, again, uncertainty regarding the Catalan uh, vote as well. Uh, we are, we do have uh, PMI numbers coming in, European PMI data coming in today, or should we say Monday's trading, UK PMI data as well, manufacturing PMI. So it'll be interesting to see the, the numbers there. Any signs of weakness there obviously will cause Euro USD. Uh, so it caused Euro stock certainly to uh, go into profit taking mode. We have US data on tap as well, ISM, construction spending, and Mr. Kaplan speaking as well. So very active day Monday, and uh, wish you a prosperous week. Goodbye now.